We good? All right, let's do it. How y'all beautiful people doing? My name is Jeff Phillips. I'm a local real estate agent. I am a person just like you guys. So the first thing I love to do is to start with speaking life into you guys, but speaking life, teaching you guys how to speak life into yourself. So if I can have everybody stand up with me real quick, let's get some energy going. I know it's like, damn, up and down, up and down, but we're going to speak these words right here. So right here it says, I am is two of the most powerful words for what you put after them will become your reality. I am smart. I am healthy. I am capable. Or things that I used to think, same thing at, in my, like your guys' age, oh, I'm dumb because I was in resource classes. Oh, I'm not capable because my father wasn't there. Oh, oh, I am just supposed to be going through this journey because at the end of the day, I'm supposed to look a judge in the face and he's supposed to sentence me. That's what I, my paradigm was at one point in my life. And I had to realize the power of the words that I'm speaking to myself. So we're going to do this all together. I know it's like, oh, it's a little weird, but come on, let's do it. So I'm going to say, I am happy. You guys will repeat. I am happy. We're going to go down the line. I am happy. Let's say it with some enthusiasm. Let's speak about your life. It's about your life, your, your, your journey. I am happy. I am healthy. I am love. I am loved. I am light. I am worthy. I am capable. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys for interacting with that. And there's a real reason why I put I am love before I am loved, because love has to start within yourself. Love first has to start within you. You can't go out there and look for love externally if you do not love yourself internally. And that is one reason why these are very intentional about how they're put together. So my name is Jeff, as you guys can see. I am a local product of Deer Valley. So that's me and my mom walking during 2009. Some of y'all that play football or interact with the football team, y'all might recognize Coach Matt right there, Coach Mills, whatever he go by right now. Right there, I'll show you right here at the bottom. Oh, 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 X boy, watch this way, right here. Look at little baby face boy right there, right? That's Coach Tim, Tim Jeffries. Yeah, uh huh. That's oh, yeah, I got you. So, that's 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 my people, that's who we grew up with. We went 10 and 0, we were BVAL champs, we rocked together. From there, we all transferred to DVC. I thought, hey, man, this is my journey. This is my time. I went out to DVC. When I was at Deer Valley, I actually was a bench player. But I went up to camps, and I got all-camp athlete, all-camp wide receiver, all, all these accolades I got. But when I got back, our coach at the time wouldn't let me play. He told me in June, hey, Phillips, just know you're not going to play this whole entire year. You're going to sit the bench. That's adversity. Adversity never feels fair. So I told myself, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go out here and play for my guys because we told ourselves freshman year, we're going to go 10-0. and 0. So I showed up every day to practice and went hard for them. When I went to DVC, I thought, oh, this is my time. Coaches believe in me. I'm moving up the ranks. Now I'm playing with the second team. Now I'm getting reps with the first team. And I tore my hamstring. Damn, what am I going to do now? I'm depressed. I don't know who I am. But my mom always told me, you're more than an athlete. You're a person. You have something to contribute. So at that point, I then was like, all right, what am I going to do? I found leadership. I, I founded the Emoja program over at DVC to help matriculate first generation African-Americans, black and brown people going through college. Uh, I was a Pan-African Union president. I transferred out to Howard University. Once again, adversity. Got out there. Great. Cool. I'm doing good. I'm on the honor roll. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But the loans fell through. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the scholarships. They were about to make me sign for another $40,000 to go to school. I said, I think I want to bet on myself. I always knew I went out there originally to become a sports agent because I wanted to change the dynamics of African-American athletes going broke. But I realized when I came back, because I couldn't finish out, I could still do my why, but I could extend that why out to the, the community as a whole. So I became a real estate agent. So now I can do what I'm supposed to be doing as far as Afri African American athletes going broke by teaching them to invest in real estate and assets that are going to pay off in the long term. But I can also go to people like you, people in my community where I can teach them about home ownership, where I can teach them about getting assets, passive income. I can teach those things also at the same time. 
So it expanded my why. These are, this is my other why right here. This is my daughter, Jaren. That's my son, Zay. That's who I do it for. I do this every day and wake up every day to make sure that they have the life that I didn't have growing up. I grew up with police raids. I grew up with finding meth underneath my pillow. I found I grew up in chaos, alcoholism, drug abuse, physical abuse. I grew up in all those places, but I wanted to make sure that they had something else that I didn't have. And so today I'm going to teach you guys about becoming a real estate agent and the different aspects of it. So that's me. That's my contact info. We'll have this at the end. I'm accessible. You'll see me at Deer Valley Games. You'll see me at Food Max. You'll see me at Winco. You see me there. Come up, shake. It's good. You guys ever need somebody to call and wanted to, you know, get some more information on real estate, let me know. All right, we can go to the next one. So we're going to talk. I can teach you how to make a million dollars. The different teachers in here are going to teach you about investing. They're going to teach you how to do it. People talking about, hey, I want to go to the league. Perfect. Beautiful. Do that. Run that race. I want to become a painter or an a, a art gallery owner. Perfect. Great. But what happens is if you can't sustain that success, what's the point of achieving it if you can't sustain it? So that's the difference between your primary greatness and your secondary greatness. So your primary greatness is going to be internal. It's that internal aspects of what you have inside. Secondary greatness. Raise your hand. Tell me of some things. What do you all want to do? Me personally, I wanted to go to the NFL or the MLB and be a, a player in the Giants. Anybody else who a YouTube star, what y'all want to do? What's up? MLB. What do y'all got? What's some dreams? NFL. Perfect. What you got, brother? Yeah. So we're going to we're going to good. Great, great question. Thank you for interacting. We're going to definitely talk about that. What about you, brother? Own an art gallery. What about you, brother? Any of y'all? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Beautiful. What about you guys? Any dreams, goals? What you got? What's up, brother? Beautiful. I love it. What's up, brother? What you got? I love that. I love that. Those are all things that every single one of you guys can achieve. But what's the point of achieving it if you can't sustain it? And my brother right there just asked me, why are these three people here, right? First of all, I wanted to make sure to put some pictures of them smiling because we are not going to bash these people for the adversity that they've gone through in life. They are still good people at the end of the day. But right now, they are not in alignment with their primary greatness, and it is affecting their secondary greatness. Who knows anything about what John Moran's going through right now? Hey, man, he, he, he's just trying to adapt to his environment. He has all this success at such a young age. And it is it's easy for us to say, come on, bro, you about to get 200 million on a supermax contract. How are you not just going to put that thing away? Keep it tucked and don't show nobody. It's easy. But he's in a, a conflict right now within himself that maybe he didn't feel like he came from a place where now he has to prove, oh, I'm hard. Now you in Memphis. Oh, I got to be hard. So he's trying to adjust to his secondary greatness but he hasn't found his full primary greatness. So it's affecting it. Same thing with Mickey Williams. Anybody know what he's going through right now? Ar arrested, right? But he could have had multiple deals of money. NIL, NIL is different right now. Millions of dollars is going to go into the NIL contracts. So he could have been making money in college, then making money in the league. And right now he's fighting a case. Because his primary greatness was not in alignment with his secondary. Because it's so, it is not easy to get secondary greatness, but it is very, very achievable. Somebody can come in here and do a TikTok. Ah, ah, ah. Now you got 100,000 followers. You do another one. You go another stream. Now you got a million followers and they pay you for it. But if you've never done anything to affect your primary greatness, that secondary greatness will then slip through your hands like sand. Mac Miller, same thing. Great dude, overdosed. Had all his secondary greatness. Start climbing the charts. Doing everything he was supposed to, making money hand over fist. 
but now you lose it because you weren't in alignment with your primary greatness. And so that's why I say your primary greatness is your integrity. Who are you when no one's looking? What do you do when nobody's around? How do you act? When nobody's there to oversee you, oh yeah, hey, you should be doing this. What do you do? Being in alignment within. Like Lauren Hill says, you can't win if you ain't right within. You gotta be in an alignment. And it's, it's gonna come with experience. Young people, understand this. You're gonna have to go through trials and tribulations. Nobody up here, any of us talking to you, is not gonna sit here and act like we've never made mistakes. We've never fall, fallen short of our expectations. You hear Shaman, he failed, he failed. That's why I got these books here. I would highly suggest taking pictures of these books. These are great books. But this one right here is called Failing Forward. Failure is not just oh, I didn't pass the test, oh, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Failure is when you just give up on yourself. So you can fail forward and put yourself in a better position. When I dropped out of Howard, I dropped out. But I failed forward by saying, all right, I'm not just going to drop out. I'm going to come back. I'm going to get another job. I'm going to get a sales job because at the end of the day, I know I want to be in sales. So then from there, I use that knowledge that I got there to apply to my real estate career. Your honesty, do you tell the truth? Do you say what you're going to say and then do what you say you're going to do? Your credibility, same thing. Your authentic authenticity, your reliability, your ethics. Ethics are a big thing. So understand this. Work at your primary greatness. Work at this now. It's not easy. Meditate. Do yoga. It's funny when we're young, but I, athletes. Definitely do yoga. That's the reason why I messed up my hamstring. I was too fast for how tight my hamstring was. That's the, exactly what the doctor told me. Do those things to connect to self. We good. All right. So I understand that to get young people enticed, you definitely got to let them know, you know, about the differences between what you can do. So this right here is what's called an MLS listing, multiple listing service. As a real estate agent, this is what I see on the back end when I'm going to sell uh, or buy a house for or going with a client to buy a house. So the first thing we're going to look at, the original price. It's right here in Antioch, right around the corner, 649000 So right below this, you can't see it right now, but it says it's, our average commission is 2.5%. Can somebody help me out because my phone's back there? Take out your phone real quick and let's do a little bit of math. So do 649,000. Now times that. Yep. Times that by 0 0.025. So I oh, got you. Here, let me. Can I use your phone? Jeez. Yeah, right there. So what's that number? Say it out. Sixteen thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars. That's a commission check. That's one commission check. That's me going, representing a buyer. We go. I maybe I'm on the list side and I get three percent, so I get more. But that's two and a half percent. But we we're not gonna dream small. We're gonna dream big. Could you go to the next one, please? May I use your phone? Thank you. So we're going to take 774,900 right here in Antioch, right here, 774,900, same concept, times 0 0.025. Anybody got that one? 18,725. That's a check, right? I don't got no ops. I don't got to look over my back about no police raids like my dad did. I don't got to go on the run. I don't got to do none of that. I got tax write-offs. So I go and take my family to Hawaii, the Philippines, all over the country. I tap in with a real estate investor or uh, a couple of rentals. I go tour them. I talk to a few people. I write that off. 50%. I write it off on my taxes because I'm a business owner. I own my own business. So when I go out and do business, I then get to write that off. Food, when I go out to food and I'm talking to somebody and I say, all right, let's talk real estate for a little while. Cool. I tell you about, all right, this is contingencies. This is what we're going to do. This is a strategy. Write off. There we go. Now I get that written off. We're going to dream bigger. Go ahead and take the next one. 
My bad, brother. Let me get a phone lock. Yeah. 1.2 million. Right here in Discovery Bay. That's right down the street. Literally. Takes you about 20 minutes to get over there. Same concept. 0.025. That's a check. Now imagine all of these sales are in one year. We did 18. We did 10. We did 30. We in out about like $70,000. Let's keep, let's keep dreaming. Let's keep going. Now we in Piedmont. 1.8. Made up, made up city. It's Oakland. It's a made up city. It's just a little higher up. It's literally, it's a made up city. It's Oakland. 1.8 million. You can do all of this. I don't look any different than you. I don't dress any different than you. When I go out on tours, this is what I look like. I would have had a Nipsey Hustle shirt on right now. I go out on tours and I'm touring these houses and these are the price points. But we're not going to stop here. We're going to dream even bigger. Why can't you do this? This is in your backyard, Piedmont. It's in the hills. Sorry, brother. One more time. One more time. See right up at the top, it say Alameda, Piedmont. Y'all can drive through Piedmont right now. One, it can be the house that you're buying as it's somebody that wants to be an entrepreneur and wants to make money. Two, you could be the person representing this. 12 million times 0.025. $318,000 is your commission check. Now, am I telling you this is easy? No, but am I telling you you are capable of doing it 100%? There is no reason why you guys can't be the next realtors that are doing this, that are going out there and representing buyers, representing sellers, and letting them know what you bring to the table and getting these type of checks. Is it easy? Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Is it easy? Not at all. So you'll see the one, a couple ones back. It says 75 days on market. So that's what the DOM means. It means that it's been that long for it's taken a while for that house to sell. It can take a little bit of time. But markets go up, markets go down. Right now, houses are flying off the market like that. So you could get something in the contract, literally meet a, uh, a, a, I literally just met a client last Friday. We toured that weekend. They wrote the contract up. It's a new build, so it's a little bit different than the 2.5%, but that's an $8,000 check right there. Now, there's taxes that you got to pay. There's a little bit more, but it's still a lump sum check and it still means that you guys can do this. Next one. Thank you. What does it take to become a real estate agent? What does it take? It's not hard. Believe me, I'm a test taker like Sherman. I'm failing. I'm not. That's not my go to. I, I understand myself. So the average cost to become a real estate agent, about $700, give or take. You add additional fees on the back end as well. And $700 feels like a lot as a young person, but honestly, you get, you become 18, you work a job two weeks, you probably got that in one check. You just got to be disciplined enough to go ahead and invest it back into yourself. What does it take as far as college? You don't have to go to college to become a real estate agent. Technically, you can go, you can take your classes. There's called Allied Real Estate School, excuse me. There's a couple of other ones as well. And you literally, all you have to do is study for the test from three different books. You take your test there. Then you go and you do your state test. They do the fingerprinting. And then now you have your real estate license. You go with a broker and you have the ability to sell real estate, but you also have the ability to buy real estate. And that's what I'll tell you the biggest thing. If I was selling that $12 million listing, and it was 3.8. Well, when I sell that $12 million listing, because like I said, words mean something, that $318,000, the first thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to go apply it to buying another house. I'm going to go apply it to go buying an asset. Or I find a distressed property. It's worth $600,000. I buy it. I get that $18,000. And I use part of my commission to pay for that house. So it's not even money I had to bring to the table. It was money I was earning from doing the transaction. I literally was already going to do this and pay this money. And now I get to invest it into that asset. And I don't have to come up with those funds. But this is all things you guys can do. Can I go to the next one? 
So I know we say college versus real estate or college and real estate. Personally, my thought process would be college and real estate, if I could be completely honest with you. You can, especially if you have a goal and a dream of being in the NFL or just a, a dream that would take you to college, complete that degree. But at the same time, pay that $700, get one of your FAFSA checks, get that invested into yourself, $700, Take your classes on top of your other classes. Now you have your degree. Now you call me up. Jeff, hey, I got my real estate license, but I'm still in college, so I can't really do a lot. All right, perfect. Look, I got a list of these clients that I need you to contact for me. They're cold leads. I'll give you the script on what to say. Can you just go ahead and warm them up for me so that I can then go and take them out on tours and we write up contracts? Now all you're doing is, hey, I'm calling on the behalf of Jeff Phillips. He's the local real estate agent you were working with. We just wanted to make sure that you're still going along your buying journey. Yeah, I am. All right, perfect. I'm going to connect you back with Jeff. Now, because I'm a man of ethics, because I worked on my primary greatness, I'm in partnership with you guys, but I can pay you. If, I, if you don't have your license, you can't call for me. You can't do those steps. So now that you have your license, now I give you 10% of that check, 20%. But then you get your own clients and now you go out and you can still, I know someone right now that is at UC Santa Cruz and she's selling real estate. So not only is she getting her degree, but when she sells real estate, she's in the San Jose market. They average their price point about $1.1 million. She now gets those commission checks on top of her degree as well. And those are little things that you can do inside. Now, is everybody going to college? Go experience it, at least go to the community college and have that experience. But if you realize, hey, college isn't for me, there are trades that you can get into that you can make great money. Plumbing, HVAC, all these things that are a part of real estate. I know HVAC people that never went a day to college making over $100,000, owning their own business. And that can be you guys. Let's go to the next one. So different ways you can get into real estate. You can be a real estate investor. That literally does not take you having to have a license, any education. You can go out there. You can link. I would highly suggest if you do think about real estate investing, contact me. I have some great real estate investors that would take you under their wing and have you go out with them. Uh, the next thing that you can do is like we talked about, being a real estate agent versus a broker. You can become a real estate agent. You can get your license, you can go out there and sell, and you can do these things in order for yourself to achieve those checks, but also the ability to create community. Now you have all this understanding. Now when grandma is losing her house, you have the understanding of how to either keep that house or okay, we're gonna sell this house, and grandma, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the proceeds, we're gonna do a 1031 exchange, and we're gonna put it into another income producing property for you high level concept, but you can make it very palatable for the people around you. Mom, dad, hey, I'm gonna show you, your moms, your pops, somebody in your life is eventually gonna buy a house. Why can't you be the one representing them and being the one getting that check from that? The next thing you can do is be a wholesaler. So this one is you go out there, you find a distressed property and you ask them, all right, if I can sell your house for, let's get it under contract for 300,000 but you've done the data, you've done the information, you know that this house could maybe be worth $450,000 cleaned up. You go to an a investor and you say, all right, I got this house under contract for 300,000, I'll sell the contract to you for 350,000. You're gonna make 450,000 when you finish the ARV, when you finish the after repair value, or even more. They say, okay, they sell the contract to you, at the close of escrow, you get the $50,000 difference. They get the house, they get to do what their part is, but you get that money on the back end by just going and finding some distressed properties and you putting them under contract and then you going and selling that contract to a real estate investor. These are ways that you guys can get into real estate, but it does not have to be your whole life. If you don't think real estate being an agent or something like that or any of these steps are your path, that's okay. You can be a, I call real estate a peanut butter and jelly type uh, career. Me personally, I'm more of an advocate. I like to be here amongst young people. I like to be speaking life. I like coaching. I like doing those things. Everywhere I go, I get to market. 
as long as I wear my name, my number, and it says, ask me a question about real estate, I could go to a concert. I literally went to the Nipsey Hussle concert back when he was alive, and that's the shirt I had on, was my Team Fast shirt that said I was in real estate. I'm a walking billboard everywhere I go. And that's the easiest thing I can do. So if you are someone who wants to own the art gallery, but you have your real estate license along the way, them artists, you're going to meet those artists, right? And some of those artists might be well above where you're at, but you're trying to get to them. Hey, you want to invest into some real estate? Now you have the ability to make those connections. All your connections become more connections. So I appreciate you guys. Now we're going to get into some Q&A. If anybody has any questions, this is my information. Go ahead, take a picture, tap in with me. I'm telling you, I'm accessible. You might see me around Antioch. I'm very, very accessible. Walk up to me. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. That's a great question. So originally, uh, I went out to Howard to become a sports agent. When I came back, me and my boy Miles, uh, which was one of the guys I graduated from, he was already in real estate. When we started talking about my why, I wanted to change the dynamics of African-American athletes going broke. He was like, look, you can still do your why, but you can expand it to everybody. And I'm a person of service. So this is a tattoo right here that is an African proverb that says, he who wants to be king in the future must first learn to serve. So I was like, all right, cool. If I can't become a sports agent because I feel like I needed the degree, what can I do? And then that's when he told me, everything around you is real estate. When y'all leave this place, go around with these eyes. Everything around you is real estate, whether it's commercial, because someone needs a lease, like all of the grocery store, Starbucks, all that, those are all commercial leases. You can represent any single one of those entities. You can buy those commercial real estate. You can sell that commercial real estate, residential, government leases, all of that. That's all real estate. So that's really what it was, was everything was real estate. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the brokerage that I'm at actually allows me to do seven real estate commercial deals. So what a commercial deal is, is multifamily. So anybody, I live in an apartment. Anybody else live in an apartment complex or has ever lived in an apartment complex, seen a comp apartment complexes? All that is commercial real estate. You do have the ability to sell commercial real estate with just your regular real estate license. And the average is are 4 million plus on all of those commissions. Yes. I technically can if I get licensed in those. So what I do when we're going out of state is I'll do a referral agreement. So that's why community is big. Having real estate agents in almost every single market or having a team like I have a big team that has real estate agents in every single market, I call them up, hey, I got a referral for you in Tennessee. All right, cool. I literally do nothing. I go about my day and then they close. And next thing I know, I get a ping on my phone that $10,000 or $5,000 was deposited because I connected them to somebody in Tennessee. And that's some of the easiest money you'll get. Just, hey, I know this person out in Tennessee, they wanna buy. I know this person out in Texas, they wanna buy. Here's this agent, cool, perfect put them together and now you're good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love this. I love that question. Yes, I can. So yes, you can what's called be a dual agent. You can represent a buyer and a seller. So that $12 million listing would have been closer to about $700 million or $700,000 for that I don't personally like to double in because I like to be ethical and sometimes you can't always take into account what the seller wants and the buyer wants at the same time. Sometimes it's a little harder to meet at that middle ground, but if it's a very smooth transaction where it's an understanding they already had, hey, this is the number that we're going to buy this property at, then yeah, you can double in a transaction as well. So now instead of making two and a half percent, you're making 5% of that com total commission. No, you're good. Yep. I'm about to get my phone. I appreciate all you guys.
Yes. What's up, brother? Hey, man. I've been trying to get into, you know, the real estate. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Definitely, definitely. You know. Hey, let's, let's, 100%. Yep. I got you all the steps. Yes, Agua. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.